Previously on Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Tommy believed that there were more criminals on the streets in this city compared to the ones in prison. That's why he thought gathering information by hitting the streets would be more beneficial. He asked Ken Rosenberg for a name from the streets, and Kent Paul came to Ken Rosenberg's mind. Ken suggested that if a large amount of cocaine had made its way to the streets, it must have reached Kent Paul. He mentioned that Kent Paul was often hanging out at the Malibu Club and advised Tommy to find him there. To locate Kent Paul, Tommy headed to the Malibu Club. He attempted to gather information from Kent Paul, who informed him that there was a chef working in a hotel kitchen on Ocean Drive. According to Kent Paul, the chef seemed unusually happy lately. He advised Tommy to check him out, emphasizing the importance of doing so. Tommy went to Ocean Drive and found the chef talking on the phone. He incapacitated the chef and confiscated his phone. Just then, another person in a white suit arrived at the scene, claiming to share a common goal. He offered to help Tommy. He stated that as two strangers in the city, they should watch each other's backs. Despite Tommy insisting that he could handle things on his own, the chef's associates, armed with machetes, approached. The person in the white suit handed a weapon to Tommy, and they escaped the scene. Together, the man in the white suit was Lance Vance, the brother of Victor Vance, who had lost his life during the ambush. He expressed his desire to collaborate with Tommy to find their common enemies. Meanwhile, the phone Tommy had taken from the chef rang. The caller informed Tommy that they had found a buyer for Diaz's goods, providing him with a valuable lead. Tommy returned to Ken Rosenberg's office, where Ken had another task that needed handling. Sonny Ferelli's cousin Giorgio had received a five-year prison sentence for fraud. Sonny wanted Giorgio released, but legal persuasion with the jury had failed. Ken asked Tommy to intimidate the jury members to secure Giorgio's release. Tommy vandalized the cars of the jury members and delivered the message that it was from Giorgio. With this, our third chapter concludes. Now, let's move on to the fourth chapter. Enjoy the story. Hey, Tommy, it's Sonny. How's the suntan? I ain't got no suntan. We ain't got my money either, so I'm one of them myself. What are you doing? So tell me, Tommy, what are you doing? I'm looking for the money, Sonny. Don't worry. I am worrying, Tommy. That's my style, because I seem to have this problem in my life with unreliable people. Don't be an unreliable person, Tommy, please. Do us both a favor. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Without saying, Tommy, Tommy, any progress? No, 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 no. Tell me later. Tell me later. Tommy, this is Avery Carrington. I believe you met at the party. Not in person. Howdy. Avery here has a proposition. <clears throat> Haven't we got other things on our mind? I'm trying to keep the wolves from the door. So could you please cut me some slack? I'm stretched like a wire, and even if I'm dead by the end of the week, I'd like to think that I didn't die poor. Now just okay? calm down, both of you. Son, you help me, and any greaseballs giving you a hard time, I'll see to it they take a long dirt nap. Okay, what can I do for you? This delivery company's got its depot on some prime land. They won't sell. They're hanging on like a big old prairie rat. So we gotta go in there and smoke that vermin out. Head on down there and stir up a hornet's nest. The security will have their hands full and then you can sneak in and put them out of business. And you could drop by Raphael's for a change of clothes. You might be there a while, but yeah, go for it. Should be a riot. If the balls drop like they should. Stop by my office sometime. These pricks anyway. Lawyer pricks, rug wearing pricks, surrounded by pricks. Yeah, I remember. Uh, Mr. Versetti, it was 
I know. I want you to know me and my people are doing their utmost to get to the bottom of it. If you'd like to talk to me more privately, you can find me at the boat. Huh? Okay? Good day, senor. Come in and park yourself on the hide, son. Hell, my daddy used to say, never look a gift horse in the mouth. And by golly, he never did. Would you like a drop of the old Kentucky? No, thanks. A clean thinker. I like that. Now, the property business isn't all about highfalutin paper pushing. It's about dirt and the will to claim that dirt. You with me, son? Oh, yeah. Well, I need some tenacious bastard to let go of some dirt. And you look to me like the kind of guy to persuade him. Persuasion's my forte. Yeah, he'll be down at the country club, down on the golf course. They don't allow guns, so his bodyguards won't be packing lawgivers. Go beat eight tons of crap out of him. Here now, I got you a membership. And boy, you're gonna need more appropriate clothing. This guy's my new friend. I never had a friend with a wig before. Is this me? Nice ass, baby. Is this guy? Boys, deal with him. Get him! To that psycho! Please, after you. I despise dried fruits. Ah, Caddy, get over here. Me, me, me! Hello! Now look here, son. I got a problem, and I reckon you could help me with it. I'm no builder. No, I was thinking more of your demolition skills. Now this here, this is the development as planned, and this, this is the property that we're looking at. You're trying to say this new office block is kind of in the way. You catch on quick. Now I'm gonna head out of town for a while, and if that office development would have faced sudden and insurmountable structural problems, then I... As a civil-minded individual, you feel obliged to step in and save the rejuvenation of an important area of the city. Where can I get more guys like you? Construction business ain't for with.
is this? Kill the malice. 